issued warnings about IVC medical devices, which are sometimes implanted in the veins of a patient during surgery to prevent blood clots from migrating to the lungs. The warning is in place because there have been hundreds of reports of adverse effects and complications. My guest today is board certified personal injury attorney Terry Bryant, and he is going to help educate us about both cautions and potential side effects associated with these IVC filters. So Terry, thank you for being here today. Thank you, Cindy. Terry, what is an IVC filter? The IVC filter is a medical device that is designed to stop blood clots from traveling to the lungs. It is implanted in, in what is known as the inferior vena cava, which is just below the kidneys. The function of the device is to intercept an embolism or blood clot that breaks loose from one of these deep veins in the legs. The device would be used on someone diagnosed with deep vein thrombosis to prevent life-threatening pulmonary emboli. Typically, a patient has a history of developing blood clots in the legs. And what does this device look like, and when would it be used? Well, the device looks kind of like a small cone. It's made of metal and is only typically used on patients that have deep vein thrombosis and can't use blood thinners. It is implanted into the patient's vein to prevent a blood clot. Terry, what are some of the side effects that have been reported? Well, Cindy, there are some very serious side effects associated with this device, which in some cases have resulted in death. What happens when the device fails is that it can puncture a vein or an organ, or the filter can actually migrate to another part of the body. Also, when these devices are used, they may be permanent or short term. The strategy with the short-term or retrievable filters is to remove them once the risk of pulmonary embolism is no longer in play. What's interesting, however, is the studies show that less than 10% of the supposedly short-term filters are removed, and the problem with that is that the longer they're left in the body, the more difficult they are to remove. As a matter of fact, the FDA recommends removing the retrievable devices within 54 days assuming the risk of a pulmonary embolism has passed. We've heard there are many lawsuits regarding this medical device, and what is the basis of those lawsuits? The lawsuits are based on a number of things, including a failure to warn, design defects, manufacturing defects, consumer fraud, and misrepresentation, and worst of all, wrongful death. Who manufactures these devices? There are a number of manufacturers, but the biggest ones are Bard, Cook Medical, and Johnson & Johnson. If someone suspects they or a loved one has suffered injury from one of these devices, what do you recommend they do? The first thing they should do is consult with a personal injury attorney that has experience dealing with defective medical devices, and this is a highly specialized area of law. The good news is that virtually all personal injury attorneys will offer a free consultation, so it doesn't cost you anything for the initial visit. Well, Terry, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Cindy. Until next time, this is Cindy Speaker for Texas Law TV.